Brought to you by... Reviewed and discussed by many, done no better or more in depth than by Red Letter Media, today we discuss the many issues that are burned into the frames of a ridiculous little laughable horror that has carved its own small place in horror history. <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to ETF. As many of you regular viewers already know, I usually do my best to not completely rip apart any film that I cover here on the channel. I try to find the good in any film and provide faults and strengths about each one, as well as constructive criticism on how they could have done things a little better. This one however is hard to find the good in. Today I give you Jack O. A long, long time ago, a wizard was put to death, but he swore vengeance on the townsfolk that did him in, particularly Arthur Kelly's family. Arthur had done the final graces on him when he came back to life as Mr. Jack the Pumpkin Man. The Kellys proliferated through the years, and when some Devil May Care teens accidentally unleashed Jacko, young Sean Kelly must stop him somehow as his suburban home is accosted and the attrition rate climbs. Coming straight out of the trash bin of the 90s VHS era of horror, we start out this romp by being introduced to the most unintimidating Harbinger of Doom type character to ever grace the screen. Word to the wise, making him an overweight, middle-aged stepfather type with a bald head and porn stash kind of leans the other way when attempting to spread fear. The film wastes no time in introducing us to a collective of some of the most terrible performances. Not a single line is delivered with any form of weight, emotion, or conviction of any kind. I knew nothing about this one going into it, so from the opening credits, I learned that I would at least be able to look forward to the infamous Linnea Quigley and her ample bosom, which are shown off at length during her introductory shower scene, and that is just one of the earliest in a long line of abysmal flaws that plague this narrative. We're talking terrible editing, poor camera work, childish writing, and lack of any form of direction. For example, during a scene where Sean is brought home at the beginning, what in the blue perfect fuck is the dad doing? He looks to be screwing a piece of fabric into a small, free-hanging block of wood. I would think a staple gun or nail gun might do a better job. Or, you know, securing it to the wall instead. This film is a prime example of the kinds of direct-to-video trash that was sliding onto shelves of video stores in the 80s and 90s. The Jacko costume is so cheesy that it looks like it stepped off the set of Halloween Town. And this one is actually infamously known for the fact that it recycles old clips from previous films to pad itself out and gain a little more star power. For example, John Carradine, who passed away seven years before this film was ever released, and Cameron Mitchell, who shows up as a horror host on TV named Dr. Cadaver. The gore and practical effects in this film are also mildly tame, so no fun waiting in the wings there. Aside from one overly bitchy toast-snacking bitch who gets electrified to the bone by a faulty toaster. This film may have been aiming to be a fun horror movie, but wound up delivering an in-your-face black comedy with a weak story and little to no structure. Like most films of this caliber, none of it is very well lit, and it underutilizes camera work to a severe degree. There is, of course, the closing burial sequence. Bob Vila. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> like, I'm pretty no. sure it's dog. There are no words. I'm giving Jack O an F fucking minus. Friends, just fuck. I can't recommend that you find something else to watch more. I've seen some trashy films, but this is about as low grade as it gets. 
While this one is hilarious to watch with the right people, it's also a complete waste of your time. The right people out there might enjoy this film for what it is. I mean, there are, of course, worse films lingering in the dark. Thank <laughs> you.